it's always, it's not just the money, it's, but where's the money going? So if you're thinking in your head, oh yeah, well, I just want to do this to make money. Well, your first question is, well, why do I want the money? Or even better, what is the money for? Right. And that will help you get to your true why. Welcome to Let's Talk Real with Mel. We are here with Kate Newey, real, realtor extraordinaire from Chicago yeah. and surrounding areas. I guess. Exactly. Born and raised. Born and raised from Chicago. Born, that was my next question. Born and raised in Chicago. Chicago is a huge, you know, coming from D.C. Chicago, I've been there a few times. It's a huge city. It is. You got the north side. You got the south side. You got the suburbs. You got people saying they're from Chicago, but really they're from Indiana, like 20 minutes away. So it's a, it's a big, big footprint. Okay, and you are a newer realtor in mm. Chicago, right? Been only been licensed a couple of years, but really, really hidden hard, like hard and fast. What is your what, well? One, what made you get into real estate in the first place? So I got into real estate because my fiance actually got his license, and I was starting off just doing his social media. So I came from a background of 15 plus years in the fitness industry and I was just burned out. I was owning and operating gyms all throughout the Midwest. Um, so I actually sold my last gym right before COVID hit. So it was perfect. Just, just in time. Um, and then I had a lot of health stuff starting to happen and it just wasn't the right fit for me to keep teaching these fitness classes full time. And it's very physical, physically demanding to teach you know I was teaching everything from kickboxing to Pilates to yoga to strength training to water aerobics I mean I did the whole shebang um and then owning and operating these gyms I was just hitting burnout I was exhausted the health uh issue which maybe we'll talk about later was like the big kind of wake-up call you know you can't really do this anymore so COVID happened um started doing social media for my fiance he was a part of a team and then uh, I just accidentally fell in love with it. I never wanted to be a realtor. I never had it on my radar. What? Just accidentally fell in love and got my license. And here we are. So we can thank your fiance then for your success. Right. <laughs> Man, that's pretty cool. Does he take the credit for it? He, you know, he's so humble. He's so understated. And I'm so like, ah, and out there and crazy. And our personalities are like oil and vinegar or oil and water, or whatever the opposites yeah. are. We are complete opposites, but we complement each other. And that's, I think, why we work. That's cool. So you guys are still, you guys are partnered, working together in the real estate business together. Yeah. And what does your, uh, so you, you said you started, so you sold your last gym in, right before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and you got your license in the fall of the next year? Yep. So I got my license October 2020. Then my first full year of production. So I just did one deal with, um, the same month I got licensed, I got a DM on Facebook, actually, once I did a post of, hey, I'm a realtor now. And I kind of made a joke, like, who wants to be my first client? You know, like, right. nobody wants to be the like, first. Nobody wants to be the guinea pig. But I had someone raise their hand. Right. Um, it was actually a, a girl who's the sister of one of my best guy friends back from seventh grade. And we just grew up together. And we were just Facebook friends, never really talked other than that. She was relocating to the area. So awesome. sold her a house like the month I got my license. It was awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Welcome to real estate. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like if you build it, it will come. So 2021 was the first year of real estate, the first full year. Right. Okay. And you, and you, and you pretty much came out the, like, you came out like, Kick, kick the door in and... Man, Melvin, I'm the type of person, like, if you're anything like me, I'm competitive. I want to do well. Whatever I put my mind to, I want to follow through and succeed. So I was just ready to hit it hard right away. So we did well the first year, and we've just been growing ever since. Right. I love that. So you didn't, like, half-ass it. You, 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 you said, if I'm going to do it, if, if anything worth doing, you're going to do it all the way. Yeah, I'm all in. I'm either all out or all in. So here we go. All in. Okay. And so what does your, um, what does your makeup look like now? I know you're growing, but what is your, like, consi what does your team look like, like like now? Your, you, your fiance? Yeah. So I work with my fiance. We co-list all of our listings. Um, I list him as co-buying broker on all of our buys. So we just have different, um, parts of the business that we like to specialize on. He's really good at the operations, the day-to-day, -day, the, um, transactions, the, the management of, you know, the work getting the work done, getting it to the closing table. 
um, with our with our team of uh, you know we have a videographer on on staff. We have a uh, uh, transaction coordinator, and next hire will be a client care coordinator to take care of all the past clients that now we have that we need to nurture. Okay. But the growth is um, building a team. So we have one part time agent that we're mentoring and helping him with transactions. And then I have two agents right now that are actually in real estate school. One just passed. She has to take the, um, just passed her pre-licensing. She has to take the broker test in Illinois. And then um, I have another girl that's starting, I think, June 21st. So upcoming. And and I heard a bunch of people like raising their hands. Like, Gosh, Melvin, I'm getting DMs all the time. Like, when you're ready to grow your team, I'm in. Like, how how can I sign up? Well, you've got an awesome personality. So they want to be a part. They want to be a part. And, and and really, and it's not just, you know, obviously personality is great, but you back it up with results. Thank and you. I guess that's where your um, where your fiance comes in with the systems and some of that operations to make sure that you're. Yeah, he's my rock. I mean, I could not function without him. I mean, I'm wild. I have all these ideas. I have so many ideas. And he's the one that really grounds me, pulls me back to earth. And he's like, hey, great. These ideas are awesome, but let's organize them. Let's put a timeline to it. And let's actually figure out how we're going to get this done. So I could not do the business without him. He is my everything. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So we did. So 15 years in, in fitness. Yeah. Then now we're maybe two and a half years yeah. in real estate. Um, where do you see the, I mean, I think you were alluding to it already, but where do you see the business kind of going from here with these, with this growth? I mean, five years from now, you're probably going to have a, do you want a huge team? Do you want more of a smaller group? Like what do you, what is it? What's your vision? The vision is to just be of service to the community that we love so much. So fun fact, I actually met my fiance in kindergarten in the town where we live now where we're selling our main market so we've been here forever and we've known each other forever so this whole community where we sell is our our home our bread and butter we want to have kids and raise a family here so whatever we can build we want to just pour into our community and just show it so much love so whether that's a big team or a small team i don't know quite what that looks like yet um, kind of like I mentioned before, we're just going to try the whole, if you build it, they will come thing and just have the right people be attracted to the work that we're doing. Um, you know, I'll never be that person that's going to go out and recruit. I'll never be that person who's going to try to sell you on joining our team. Like, I just want to create something that people want to be a part of. And then like, let's make magic together and let's help people, you know, buy and sell houses. I love it. And so your help and your, so you will attract, I mean, from what I've learned about you so far, you will attract agents now. And so, and that's pretty cool that your husband, so he was like pulling your ponytail and stuff when you were in kindergarten, like put gum in your hair, all of that. He has a future husband. So we're getting married in December. Okay. So if we're like this close, so then we can officially say we're husband wife team. But right now, well, we have a really stupid rhyme. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Let's share it. Go ahead. And okay. So, you know, like sometimes people can't remember your name. Especially when there's two of us. So I go, you know, I got it easy for you. It's really cheesy. You're ready. And they go, yeah. I say, okay, great. We're Dan and Kate. We date and we sell real estate. So now that we're not going to be dating anymore, we're going to get married. You're going to have to change your I'm slogan. To change my rhyme. I know. I know. We date and we sell real estate. Yeah. You can say we're Dan and Kate. We used to date and we sell real estate. We're, we're Dan and Kate. We used to date. Now he's my forever life mate and we still real <laughs> I like that yeah that no, we I like it I like it work on we'll it. think we'll, we can we can we use chat GPT and we'll tighten it up Love it. All right <laughs> all right so I'm I'm sure you know the, the real estate is getting off to a great start you were a gym owner mm-hmm. um what was what was that like I mean I, I, and you know obviously you sold and you're not in that business anymore mm-hmm. but it's it's from the outside looking in it, it seems like wow you're so successful you 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 own and operated gyms. Now you're kill. Of course, you're going to kill it in real estate uh, or anything else you would do. Yeah. And has it was it always perfect? No. Oh my gosh, no. So much failure. So many big failures. And I think you learn from your biggest failures, and that's where and what really drives you to um, do better. And once you know better, you do better. Oh my gosh, so many mistakes. You know, you don't know what you don't know. Until you know it. <laughs> and then right. sometimes you still don't know what you don't know. So um, when I first started in fitness, I 
got into working with big box gyms. So, you know, those big chains that are huge and they just want quick turnover and they want lots of um, quantity and not necessarily quality of just transactions coming in. You know, they they don't care about a quick turnover. They just want the memberships. Uh, You know, they'll take your money whether you come to the gym every day or once a year. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So nothing wrong with that model. It just wasn't for me. So I kind of went from working from the big box gyms to the smaller boutique studios um, that really focused on niching down to the specific type of fitness. Right. So specifically yoga or specifically interval training group classes uh, or specific bar classes. Um, I mean, I think I got my hat on right now. I still teach a couple classes at Pure Bar, Um, but it. Not like vodka and cranberry. Okay, not like vodka cranberry. So B A R R A, like and bread, the ballet bar. Got it. Yes. Got it. Um. So it's it's a great low impact workout. We use resistance tubes. Basically, if yoga, Pilates, and strength training had a baby, it would be bar. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um. So the thing I think with all, you know all of that experience translating to real estate and and creating this new business was learning what you don't want and then really getting crystal clear then on what you do want. So I think I was able to figure out what I wanted to build from learning of all of the past, you know, past mis- I sure there were mistakes and there were lots of failures, but also figuring out how can I be better? How can I be a better leader? How can I um, show up for the people that, you know, work at the time for me, you know, with a real estate team, I would say with me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, at the gym, you know, I was the boss and it was hard being the boss. I was probably a really terrible boss at first because I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, I'm like 22 at the time. It was like over a decade ago. So, yeah. And, and but the thing is, you were mentioning the, the, you know, the failures or the challenges, you like to say, if you hadn't had those, you probably wouldn't be where you are. You wouldn't have learned, like if yeah. you know, if if everything were perfect. What yeah. was one challenge in particular, or failure, as you call it, in particular, yeah, that stood out, and um, and what did you do to 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 overcome it? Yeah, you know, it can be personal, it can be professional. I think I think a big a big thing that I didn't realize was it works it works from the top. the cu- The culture starts at the top, right? And so if you're not emulating and walking the walk every day, how are you gonna expect your people to follow that? So if I'm preaching X, Y, and Z for this brand, and then I'm not able to deliver that on a day-to-day basis in the trenches with you, I'm just telling you what to do, I'm not there with you. Um, I think that was a big learning curve too. And I think that translates to real estate, Melvin, because when you you are a team leader, you can't just say, okay, you do this, you do this, you do this without me having the proof in the pudding. Like either I've done this, here's how, let me do this with you. Um, it's it's that whole catch 22, pun intended of catch with fish, but it's the whole catch 22 of like, you give a fish, they eat for a day, you teach a man to fish, they eat for a lifetime, that kind of thing. So I think the biggest lesson I learned as a leader was, um, you know, you can't just like do it you have to show it. teach it you have to show it you have to be there um yeah so it goes back to the it goes back to the service yeah which was i think what you said that was kind of one of your principles one of your pillars on the real estate side mm-hmm. is you know uplift the community a thousand percent and we can always come up with excuses i think that was that was what was a big turning point in um being a leader and where i failed was i was you know, failing and I was making excuses because of, you know, health issues. But then I needed to realize, hey, I need to take a step back. And so um, that's why I ended up selling my last gym. I mean, I wasn't able to be there. I wasn't able to be present. I was dropping the ball on certain things. I was, um, you know, just expecting my studio manager who managed the the fitness team and the front desk team of this particular gym. I was expecting her to just, you know, handle it and do everything. Um, meanwhile, I'm going through this health crisis, but still, I should have recognized quicker, like I needed to step away. Um, so I think that was a huge turning point in growth as a leader, like when to know your boundaries and when to step away. Yeah, and when to shift gears. And when to shift gears, yeah. Yeah, because if you probably, if you didn't, then you uh, you may have run it into the ground. 
you would, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, eventually, yeah. You, almost, I mean, that's close. Yeah. So at least you were able to transition that's and pass it on to someone who's going to take your baby and run with it and keep it thriving. Yeah. And you know, it's like, there was so much resistance. Like, my ego wanted to fight. I was like, no, I can do this. Like, yeah. I, I messed up. Let me fix it, you know? And it's like, no, at some point, like, you got to move on. So having that, putting your ego aside to know when it's time to move on, like, yeah. That was a big life lesson. Yeah, it, it's almost like if I think we think about using a real estate example, you know, almost like a, a, a seller who who is, um, you know, going towards foreclosure but doesn't want to sell. And you're telling them, listen, just sell it. We can sell it now. You can still make money. But, you know, it's they've lived in the home for a long time and they just won't let it go. And then ultimately sometimes it doesn't work out. Yeah. And they walk away with nothing. Yes. Almost like they were in denial for so long. You know, they're burying their head in the sand. It's that fight or flight or freeze, right? They're not fighting. They're not fleeing yet. They're just frozen. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. You're, you're, you're an awesome. Yeah. You're an awesome, awesome team leading. So what do you do? I mean, obviously you, you, you're still working out. You're just oh, yeah. doing exercise. Oh, what yeah. do you, is, do you have any other hobbies? I mean, yeah. Outside how, of, how yeah, I know. Outside of, outside of real estate. Okay. What are my hobbies? I mean, I love to read. I'm the biggest book nerd there is. You know, um, probably I'm reading at least one audiobook, two nonfictions, a fiction. Uh, I'm reading four to five books at a time. Um, you ask me how I have time to do that. Audiobooks are amazing because they're always on. What's your speed? What's your preferred speed? Does it adjust or is it, do you have a consistent speed? That you Great follow? question. It's usually 1.7, but if mm -hmm. they, well, you think that's slow or fast? I think that's, I think that's. You think that's fast? Oh my gosh. My fiance listens at 2.0. So two times the speed. And I think okay. that's insane. My brain can't even process that. I used, funny. To, I used to do one and a half. Okay. But I, I found that I enjoy the book a lot more at 1.2. At 1.2. Okay. That's kind of like. But it does take, you know, obviously it takes longer. Oh, yeah. And I will say, if the narrator has a British accent, I have to slow it down. Oh, God. <laughs> Can't listen to the fat British accent. Yeah, it's it's just, just, yeah, it's too much for my brain. Right. That's funny. So we're, so you're an avid reader. Love to read. Love to water ski. Big water skier. Okay. Yeah. Um, then snowboarding is great, but I got a big scar here from snowboarding. So we're going to, like, take a little take break. Take a break? Is that recent? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is from, uh, well, the break was from 2016, but I had surgery on it in 2020. So. Okay. Yeah. You're snowboarding. Yeah. The, I mean, the break healed, but it had so much scar tissue going on that they had. Had to clean it up. Yeah. And water skiing. Now, now, do you, are you water skiing in Chicago? No. Um, small family cabin, maybe two hours outside of Chicago okay. on a small lake, just eight miles around, but grew up there. Cabin's been in my family for a hundred years, so. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to figure out, Chicago gets kind of cold. So oh, yeah, it gets hot too. Yeah, so you get you get some you get some some seasons, all the seasons. I mean, they don't call it the Windy City for nothing. Which fun fact? They don't call it the Windy City because of the weather, but it just happens to fit with the weather. But that's a whole other story. Right. I digress. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. But yeah, when you want the warmth, you go on vacation or you stick out the hundred degree days in the summer. You know. Yeah, we hear the story. You know, in D.C. it gets. You know, hot and cold, and not like not like Chicago. It's all over the place. I I don't even pretend to know what the weather is going to be. You just got to be prepared for all things. It'll be snowing one day and then sunny the next. I mean, it really does. when when folks from Chicago come to DC, like they close school for like four inches of snow. Yes. Like, what is this BS? No, we're like, going to schools in blizzards right. on ten feet of snow. Like they're not like school. school. Right. School is all, and you're going to get that education, whether you like it or not, kids. Yeah. No. Get up. Get out. Right. <laughs> All right. So if you could, you know, you've, you've had, you know, quite a journey um, between the, the businesses, the health scare, the, uh, and now with your new business, you know, there's, there are entrepreneurs out there that are, you know, kind of watching this and, and thinking like, you know, wow, like you're so strong, you know, um, and brave, like, you know, I'm not like you, you know, how, what would you say to that person that is, um, either thinking about starting a business or maybe they're in a business now um, that, that maybe is not thriving, you know, or maybe not a business at all. Maybe they're, they're, they're struggling in a, in, a, in a relationship or, you know, or trying to finish school or whatever that journey is for them. And they're thinking about, you know, maybe not, maybe quitting or just let me, I'll just do something else. And what would you say to them that, that they can use to, 
to 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 give them some motivation to push through? I would tell them, unless you are relentless in your pursuit for, you know, whatever your passion is, whatever your business is, you will find excuses, and those excuses will get in the way. You know, just like my my last business, and I I just if you're out there and and wondering like you know, where do I go? What do I do from here? Or like you said, you're just starting. I think you have to just be relentless in the pursuit of this is what I want. This is my why. We've all heard the your why should make you cry. So unless you are truly in it um, for something deeper than just the money or just for, you know, fold stars on the wall or awards, like you have to be in it for for a very specific and deep passion. Um, I think it's easy to have life happen and then we all give excuses and then you know it could just slip through your fingers so I think you just have to continue to be yourself and be true to who you are because if you're trying to be somebody else or something else I mean how's that going to feel at the end of the day like you're not able to truly be yourself so when I got into real estate and I owned the, you know, Hat and Heels brand, like this is who I am, this is how I am. If you don't want to work with me, great. But the people that do, they really want to work with you. Yeah. So if you could be yourself in whatever your business is, you know, or anything from, you know, you're passionate about makeup to like whatever it is, yeah. like you're a chef. I mean, whatever it is, like you're a plumber and you really love being a plumber. Like just go all in and own it and just just do it. I mean, sorry, Nike, I didn't mean to take right, right. Logan, but like, let's go. Like, yeah. just just be you, do you, and do and, it, and it can just be money, right? Because we know that that doesn't work either. And they say, oh, I really want to do this because of the money. There's so much money to be made in X Y Z business. I'll do it for that reason. That's right. not enough. We find well, it's not. And sure, money is is the underlayer of the real reason and you think that's the underlayer but it's not then there's actually layers beneath the money so yeah you want money but what do you want the money for do you want the money to buy your mom a house because your mom's been taking care of you her whole life and she you want her buy her a new house or you know you have nieces and nephews that count on you and you have to take care of them or your children or your dog you know whatever it's it's always it's not just the money it's but where's the money going? So if you're thinking in your head, oh, yeah, well, I just want to do this to make money. Well, your first question is, well, why do I want the money? Or even better, what is the money for? Right. And that will help you get to your true why. And, you know, it goes deeper than the why. You have to you have to talk about the how. You know, there's people with great whys out there, but they're total assholes. <laughs> it's like, okay, great. So that you have a great why, but then how are you going to get it done? How are you going to do it? And that's where it comes in. You're going to do it by being yourself and by attracting the people that want to work with you because you're being you, you know? I'm not here trying to be Melvin. I'm not here trying to be Sally over here. I'm here being me. You ever see Ted Lasso? Yeah. Okay, so for those of you who have seen Ted Lasso, I'm going to take you back to season one. And those of you who haven't seen Ted Lasso, it's okay. I'll give you quick context. So you know the character Keely, and she's going on a photo shoot. And she has to choose whether or not she wants to be a panda or a lion. Do you remember that episode? I don't remember that. Okay, so it's in the season one. So she goes, all right, I'm asking everybody in the episode. Like, it's a shtick throughout the whole episode. Would you rather be a panda or a lion? You know, Keely asks Ted, hey, Ted, would you rather be a panda or a lion? She asks a character named Rebecca, would you rather be a panda or a lion? And finally, at the end of the episode, Ted asks Jamie Tart, another character on the team, and he goes, hey, Jamie, would you rather be a panda or a lion? And Jamie goes in his accent, which I won't pretend to do, but he's like, coach, I'm me. Why would I want to be anything else? You know, <laughs> like, do you remember that moment? That was a moment. And it was just, yeah, I'm me. Like, why would I want to be anything else? No, be yourself. Yeah. 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 Un, un, um, apologetically. Yourself. unapologetically yourself you know i feel like the word authentic gets thrown around so much these days but it's true you just got to be authentically you and you know? yeah that's cool i forgot about that and hills i mean after that I forget that was i remember like that was the that was the whole thing and now you're like you're evolving like and now you know and you're like okay maybe that you know as you're gonna grow to now four then six then ten maybe 20 maybe 50 like we don't know you know, I guess you're moving away 
I'm going to miss the hat and heels. You're not going to let the hat and heels go. You're still going to. You know, like, I'll still wear hats and heels. That's who I am. But, you yeah. know, that's my personal brand. But yeah, I mean, as we build a team, I mean, it's not going to be like the hat, hat and heels team. Right. Like, like, beep, beep, beep. Hey, guys, if you want to join the team, you have to wear hats and heels. Okay. Like, no, it's not going to feel like that. So I, I would have a hard time balancing in my in heels. I could I could do the hat part, but I like hats and heels. I never said I have to wear them all together, but people think that all the time. They're like, "Yo, Kate, where are your heels?" I go, "Oh man, I should have called it hat or heels, <laughs> right? Or heels. That was right. That would have been more clear." All right, cool. Well, I got a quote of the day. Let's see what we got. I love it. We'll share the quote of the day. Okay. Okay, normally we have one. We're doing two quotes of the day today. Okay. All right. Hold yourself responsible for a higher standard than anyone else expects of you. Never excuse yourself. Harry Ward Beecher. One. Second quote. Finding your passion isn't just about careers and money. It's about finding your authentic self, the one you buried beneath other people's needs. Kristen Hanna. Unapologetically yourself. That hit. That hit right. on everything we've been talking about. No excuses and be you. That's it. And everything else will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Still to do the work, though. Yeah. But Oh, yeah. But Being it's, human is hard work. Yeah. It's really hard it's to right. do. Like, it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to, you know, some, some start a family, raise a family, maybe pay a bill or two, keep the lights on. Life is hard. Life is hard. Yeah. But, uh -huh. but it is so rewarding, though, too. So rewarding. You know, we have to go through... Like, how can we know light without the dark? Like how, you know, we need those dichotomies of life. We need those dualities to be able to appreciate the the gold and the the glory of like our deepest passions and, and people we want to be with on this planet. So that's cool. Well, you're um, I'm excited to see the next time we talk, you're probably going to have like 20, a whole like a whole business mm -hmm. with lots of team members and staff and yep. all that stuff. So. <laughs> That's good. That's in your future. I didn't see it. I see it. See you. All right. I, All right. I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out. You are amazing. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you very much for joining us. Boom. Yeah.